We'll go ahead and yes, get started on the swearing in. It's in second in the agenda. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so wait, I am one. Okay, good. All right. Good evening. So we're going to be doing the swearing in individually. So, um, Councillor Coleman, if you would join. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Susan Coleman. I, Susan Coleman. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly, sw solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution and the laws of the United States. That I will support the Constitution and the laws of the United States. And of the state of Oregon. And of the state of Oregon. The charter and ordinances of the city of Sweet Home. The charter and ordinances of the city of Sweet Home. And the council code of conduct. And the council code of conduct. And to the best of my ability, and to the best of my ability, I will faithfully discharge the duties of counselor. I will faithfully discharge the duties of counselor. And will faithfully perform the duties of the office of said city. And will faithfully perform the duties of the office of said city. During the period for which I was elected. During the period for which I was elected. Congratulations. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Richard. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. All right. Please raise your right hand. I, Dylan Richards. I, Dylan Richards. Do solemnly swear. Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution? That I will support the Constitution and the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And of the state of Oregon. And of the state of Oregon. The charter and ordinances of the city of Sweet Home. The charter and ordinances of the city of Sweet Home. And the council code of conduct. And the council co code of conduct. And to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability. I will faithfully discharge the duties of counselor. I will faithfully discharge the duties of counselor. And will faithfully perform the duties of the office. And will oh god. <laughs> and will faithfully. Perform, and will faithfully dis. Perform, perform the duties of the office. Yes. <laughs> of of the said office. city. Of said city. During the period. During the period. For which I was elected. For which I was elected. Very good. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Please raise your right hand. I, Josh Thorsted. I, Josh Thorsted. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And of the state of Oregon. And of the state of Oregon. The charter and ordinances. The charter and ordinances. Of the city of Sweet Home. Of the city of Sweet Home. And the council code of conduct. And the council code of conduct. And to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability. I will faithfully discharge. I will faithfully discharge. The duties of counselor. The duties of counselor. And will faithfully perform the duties of the office. And will faithfully perform the duties of the office. Of said city. Of said city. During the period for which I was elected. And during the period of which I was elected. Yeah, congratulations. and Mayor Mahler. Sir. Please raise your right hand. Thank you. I, Greg Mahler. I, Greg Mahler. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And of the state of Oregon. And of the state of Oregon. The charter and ordinances. The charter orders. Of the city of Sweet Home. Of the city of Sweet Home. And the council code of conduct. And the council code of conduct. And to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability. I will faithfully discharge. I will faithfully discharge. The duties of counselor. The duties of the counselor. And will faithfully perform. And will faithfully perform. The duties of the office. And the duties of the office. Of said city. Of said city. During the period for which I was elected. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank 
congratulations to everyone. And if you'd like, we can take a brief recess to meet with your family or take any photos, or we can move directly into um, the nominations as the council as the council wishes. Let's move on. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Okay. So let's start with the nominations for mayor. So um, as city manager, I will open the floor for nominations for the office of mayor. Um, Madam city manager, before I make my nomination, I believe that it would be very appropriate to say a couple of things to explain the rationale for this decision. I have been attending city council meetings since 1979 when I graduated off and on, not continuously, but off and on. And I've seen a lot of mayors and councilors come and go. And I believe it's very important that we address some issues. Um, our current mayor has been on the fire department for 25 years serving this community and has served our community on the council for 16 as a businessman, a family man, a church man, a good person that has social obligations of their own. They were part of the council that saved the money in their budget, even in tar hard times, to pay cash for this building. Who carried us through coming into this building and has worked with three different city managers, has managed to help us maintain a good budget, a good city, and through the COVID crises, helped our city continue on with all the craziness going on in the world at that time. And during the fires, when smoke was filling our own lungs, they were evacuating Crawfordsville and I believe the Kalapuya was on fire. It is my understanding that there was 52 fires in our own city and we didn't lose a building. We have been through a lot. And we owe this man a lot because of the nights, the weekends and all the craziness that nobody will ever know that goes on in the background of running any city. Sweet Home is no exception. So as I make my motion tonight, I do it with the deepest gratitude for the work and the years and the service that our mayor has dedicated in his life to our community. It is a great honor to have had worked with him and know him and I will enjoy and love working with him as we continue. But I also believe his family, his business, his life deserves a break. And so we have somebody else on our council that is amazing and has served us well. Never any controversy, never any harsh words. This person has been the executive assistant to the president of Corbin University. They have worked at our capital and know legislators well, the ins and outs of the committees. They know parliamentary process and Robert's rules of order. They do their homework and ask questions in meetings. I have had the privilege of watching this person. I am so sorry, my nose and my eyes are running. Of watching this person know and understand what's going on and ask the questions and serve on committees well. A person with a family, a person with a life that loves our community and has been here. And it is an honor for me at this time to nominate Councillor Susan Coleman to be our next mayor. Okay, so Councillor Susan Coleman is nominated. Are there any further nominations? I would like to nominate Angelita Sanchez for mayor also. All right, so. Councillor Sanchez is also nominated. Are there any further nominations for the Office of Mayor? All right, then if not, nominations are closed.
Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and do a vote. So um, please vote. All right, well, let's move forward, starting with Councillor Coleman. Coleman, the paper. Well, okay. <laughs> All right, so that's seven votes for Councillor Coleman. All right, so I think we will go ahead and close. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to say before we move forward? Or should we go directly into the nominations for President Pro Tem? May I say something? <clears throat> Um, I just want to take a moment to thank Dylan for his nomination. I think that this is a very historic opportunity for Sweet Home to have a female city manager, a female mayor, and a woman of color nominated for mayor of the city of Sweet Home. Um, I do fully support Mayor Coleman in her position. I thank you for everything that you've done for our city, and I'm really looking forward to working with you. Well, I do want to say thank you. It's been an honor to be here. Thank you for the kind words, Councilor Col uh, Garley. And I feel that uh, Councilor Coleman's and now Mayor Coleman's going to do a phenomenal job for the city. Receive nominations for President Pro Tem at this time. Um, Madam Mayor, I would like to um, make a nomination for Mayor Pro Tem and again with some explanation. I believe we need continuity. We have a new city manager, we have new city staff, we have a lot of things in the mix and a lot of things going on, and we need somebody to assist you in a way that helps our citizenry the best that they can. Someone who knows the developers who are in the mix of wanting to invest in our community, who understands some of the things that have been going on in the background as we move forward within our city. And at this time, to help you and assist you the best so that our citizens benefit the most. I would like to nominate Greg Muller. Any further nominations? I would like to nominate Angelita Sanchez. Any others? Or shall I close? I will close the nominations. Ready for a vote? All right, all in favor of Councillor Muller? In favor of Councillor Muller? Four votes for Councillor Muller and three votes for Councillor Sanchez. Congratulations, Councillor Muller. So we're going to go ahead and take a five minute break, but before we do so, I would just like to say sincere, sincere gratitude to Mayor Muller for um, his years of service from the staff and from the community. All of your hard work and guidance has been very well appreciated. Also want to say congratulations to all of those nominated and um, all of those selected. So now we'll take a five minute recess. Thank you.
Okay, so before we get started, I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Gorley, for such kind words for our mayor, our, our previous mayor. I had some words that I had considered sharing as well, um, but I just think you summed it up well, so thank you. Thank you also for the kind words for me. Um, I was blown away by those things and also by all of you supporting me. I just am humbled and um, honored that you all will trust me in leading this, um, th these meetings and these proceedings. So let's get started. Roll call, please. Mayor Coleman, present. Pro Tem Mahler. Present. Councilor Richards. Here. Councilor Sanchez. Here. Councilor Trask. Here. Councilor Gorley. Here. Councilor Thorstead. Here. Look at red, let the record show there are seven present and zero absent. Let's move on to the consent agenda. Keep in mind that um, points A, B, and C are all part of the consent agenda as well as last council meeting minutes. If any counselor would like to pull something from the consent agenda to new business, please let me know now. Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. We have a first, our motion and a second. Julie, roll call, please. Councilor Trask. Yes. Councillor Gorley. Yes. Councillor Thorstead. Yes. Mayor Coleman. Yes. Councillor Mahler. Yes. Councillor Richards. Yes. Councillor Sanchez. Yes. Okay, so recognition of visitors and hearing of petitions. Is there anybody here who would like to come forward? As you get seated, please remember to give me your name and your address for the record. I'm Nancy White. My address is 911 Sixth Avenue. Thank you. And what I am here to speak to you about is we live in a, a nice neighborhood. It's an older neighborhood, but it's a nice one. Uh, we have families with little kids. It's friendly except for one house. This one house has been a problem for over two years. There have been complaints of rats in the neighborhood. This house has trash piled to the roof in the garage, bags of garbage. They spill out into the driveway. They have wrecked vehicles that they work on, dismantle. They spill out into the front yard, into the driveway. Quite often, kids have to walk out into the street to go around all of this mess. The house right now looks worse than the landfill. Code enforcement has been working on it and working on it and working on it. They get it partially cleared up and it looks halfway decent and then it deteriorates again. My question is, can you go as the city council and as our city lawyer, go over the codes, the rules and regulations, and do something to strengthen them so that it doesn't get to this point, so it doesn't take years to clean this up to where there is something you can do, something that code enforcement can do to keep it from getting to this point. It's an embarrassment. It's horrible to live next door to it. Uh, it's it's gone beyond a joke. It is uh, something that lowers the property values. Uh, is frustrating. The crime in our neighborhood has gone up to the point where we're going to be forming a neighborhood uh, watch. We hate to leave our house if we see people around this house. You worry about driving away and them knowing that you're gone. So my question is, can you do anything to put more force behind the rules and regulations so this doesn't keep going on? Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, City Manager Young, is there any way that we can look into these codes to see if something further can happen? 
we would actually be happy to review the codes and potentially bring back something to the council. Really? Okay. We would like to actually review the codes and bring back some potential suggestions to the council. Uh, we have some that we would like to discuss as early as next council meeting, and um, but we also would like to discuss a little bit more internally and, and look at what our current codes are as well. Emergency email or special weather. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Is there anybody else that would like to come forward at this time? Okay. Moving on, there's uh, no old business. New business, we have requests for council action, safe routes to school pedestrian crossing. Can we hear a staff report, please? Yes. Um, in late 2020, the city city staff applied for a safe routes to school um, grant for a, a pedestrian crossing at Highway 228 and 2nd Avenue. Uh, the application was for uh, ramp improvements and for a uh, a rapid flashing beacon that pedestrians could push a button and act to activate it, which would uh, slow down traffic on the road, allowing them to cross safely. Soon after we we received that grant in late 2020, uh, early 2021 was when ODOT was, uh, forgive the pun, ramping up on their project, and uh, they. <laughs> thanks for the pit, the pity laugh. Um, they uh, were actually doing work on the road uh, as part of that project, and those the ramps were included in their project, and so. Um, by waiting for them to finish that project, it re reduced the cost of the safe, route, safe Routes to School project, which is why it's been delayed to this point. Finally, the ramps on in that area are completed. They are, um, that's one of the areas where they will, the contractors will not be returning to. The ramps are done in that, on that, um, at that location. And so it's time to install the uh, rapid flashing beacon. To do that work, we have uh, asked uh, our engineer of record, um, or one of the partners of our engineer of record, uh, Civil West, to do the preliminary um, and construction engineering for that project. Uh, in your packet is uh, is a contract for you to review. It's approximately eleven thousand dollars for the for the engineering work. The actual construction, uh, uh, the procurement of the equipment and installation will be an additional um, unclear at this point we but the uh, app, original application was for a total of 117,000 and so we expect it definitely won't be more than 100,000 it'll probably be substantially less since the ramps are not included in that the grant covers 80 percent of the cost uh, of the project and in addition ODOT has informed us that there is another fund that could potentially be tapped to cover the other 20 percent match and so we could be looking at getting the entire cost of this project back. But at, a, at the most, we'd be paying 20%. Um, and once we get an approved contract, the engineer can get started and then we'll put out an RFP for, uh, for the remainder of the work. Any questions of council? Madam Mayor, I have, I have several questions actually. Uh, I live on 2nd Avenue. Uh, I've lived on that for since 1974 or something like that. Um, when I was employed, uh, I don't remember having to stop at a uh, cross white there forever, maybe 10 times in 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I am for this. Don't get me wrong. I'm for this. But on the other side of that, I, I think we have other places would be would necessary too. And I'll give you the example of that is Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. It's horrible there. And the school knows they can't do anything about it. It's a mess. I mean, it's a total mess. Uh, my kids were on that street. Uh, we were fortunate enough we didn't have to take them up there and walk across. Sometimes they did. And there's still kids on that on that street. Uh, I don't see them coming across that crosswalk. Uh, but it, it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's not a good thing, but I, I, I just think we need to research some of that other stuff too because there's lots of these things that could be done. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to having it done. I think the kids will be safer. There's maybe 10 down my street, maybe. I don't know. Sure. Uh, 
In, in response to that, we, we put in an application typically every time the application period is open for Safe Routes to School. It's a great, it's a great program. Um, it's all, we always have a need. Um, our most recent application was for improvements next to the junior high on Mountain View, which is also a, a huge problem. And unfortunately, we were not successful in that particular application. Um, but we will continue to apply yeah. and we will continue to uh, we'll add Hawthorne to the mix. Um, I will say, though, uh, we, we do have funding for sidewalk improvements, yeah. uh, which we have not been spending as much as we could. And uh, I, I believe there are lots of projects that we'd like to to work into that funding. May I have one more thing to talk about? Um, Councillor Trask, I'm going to see if anybody else would like to speak to the matter before you speak. May I speak again? Um, yes, you can have a, okay. according to council rules, you can have a second chance <laughs> oh, after, right? oh yeah, we are, <laughs> after everybody else has an opportunity. Does anybody else want to speak to this matter? Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Trask. Blair, what, what brought this on? Was there a complaint? Was there a request? This, uh, this particular application? Um, was done just about the time that I started uh, with the city. And so I, to be honest, do not know what prompted the application for this particular one. But after, in my time here, we have had a number of, of complaints from the public uh, concerned about the safety of crossing Holly Road. Thank you. Councilor Trask, I think I might be able to speak a little bit to that. I live on the other side of that as well. Um, the schools have tried to promote um, children walking to school. I. As a parent of small children, I did not want them crossing 228 without something there. And at some point in time, a bus did get rear-ended by a log truck, which couldn't slow down coming off the hill. It wasn't speeding. It was just heavy. Um, so I think that with that and um, with the applications that were being put forward, that's how it came about. So, But we do have $968,000 left in that account that we need to look into others. I'm curious as to why they they took out uh, Cork Mill and, and Highway 20. Uh, oh, the, the that of that application. I mean, why they don't have one there? Oh, uh, you mean the school district? Why did they why no, did they change the, the ODOT taking it out the, the light for the school zone there? Now, when that is that's close, and I mean, in my opinion, yeah. that's pretty close to Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. My understanding was that the school district had had coordinated with ODOT and determined that that was not um, a a utilized uh, crossing for students. Hmm. Um, that it's it was. I mean, certainly any pedestrian crossing is is good to keep safe. But uh, I think with the school district had communicated with ODOT and their boundaries were drawn in such a way that there weren't anyone uh, cr there wasn't anyone crossing Main Street to get to um, Hawthorne. Because I believe the north side of Main Street is all Foster Elementary. But don't quote me on that. Okay, so um, I think your high school and junior high students would be crossing there, but they probably don't because it's precarious crossing. So that's why you're not seeing kids walk there. So. But that that was uh, that was a decision made by the school district and ODOT. If there are no further questions, I will entertain a motion. So moved as recommended. Second. Julie, roll call, please. Councillor Sanchez? Yes. Councillor Richards? Yes. Councillor Mahler? Yes. Mayor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Thorsted? Yes. Councillor Gorley? Yes. Councillor Trask? Yes. Okay, we have seven ayes and no nays. Moving on to ordinance bills. Um, we have a request for council action and first reading of ordinance bills regarding number one for 2023 parking zone amendment. Okay, again, um, periodically we review our ordinances, uh, especially when we receive complaints. And in this case, uh, we have received a few complaints about parking in the downtown area. Right now we have parking zones uh, in our in our ordinance that um, author where the city manager is authorized to dictate the duration of parking and um, and order, order public works to mark parking spaces. That that is limited currently to Main Street from 228 to 18th Avenue, Long Street from Ames Creek um, Bridge to 18th Avenue, 
9th Avenue from Main Street to Nandina, 10th Avenue from Long Street to Main Street, 12th Avenue from Kalmaya to Nandina, 13th Avenue from Kalmaya Street to Nandina Street, and 15th Avenue from Main Street to Nandina Street. Uh, there have been some areas that have been left out that are um, that there we've received complaints about parking on and want to add those to these parking zones so that staff have the ability to um, set similar uh, parking standards uh, to our uh, duration and mark spaces. Uh, those areas are um, the rest of Main Street, the rest of Long Street, which are both arterial and uh, and arterial ro arterial roads in our system. 43rd Avenue between Long Street and Airport Road, Airport Road between 43rd Avenue and 49th Avenue, which are those are also arterial roads, um, as is 49th Avenue between Airport Road and Main Street. And then curiously, 15th Avenue between Long Street and Main Street was left off the list when it's very solidly within the downtown area. Um, we were also uh, requesting that to add the north side of Kalmaya between its end at the fire station and 15th Avenue as that's adjacent to commercial areas and um, uh, regulated parking is appropriate. The other side of Kalmaya is residential uses and so would remain uh, with uh, regular on street parking to benefit those residents. So um, staff has drafted an ordinance that um, puts these changes into place. Uh, it's in your packet for your review and um, we're happy to take any questions you might have about this change. Any questions of counselors? Okay. Somebody would like to make a motion? So moved as recommended. Second. Okay, Julie, roll call please. We have a motion and a second. Councilor Gorley? Yes. Councilor Thorsted? Yes. Mayor Coleman? Yes. Councilor Mahler? Yes. Councilor Richards? Yes. Councilor Sanchez? Yes. Councilor Trask? Yes. Okay, we have seven ayes and no nays. Moving on to the next request for council action, ordinance number two for 2023, vehicle camping ordinance. Excuse me, Mayor. Do you want to hold the first reading uh, for that ordinance now, or would you like to handle first readings all together if the other ordinances are? We can do that now. I was thinking all together, but now it's good. It breaks it up. Okay. Uh, and then as a reminder, I believe this was in my report, but if the since the voting wasn't uh, unanimous, if you choose to have a second reading of the ordinance after the first reading, a second reading by title only, you the council may if that is your wish. Um, but I'll go ahead and do the reading set of the electronic reading. I'll read it. Ordinance bill number one for 2023, ordinance number blank. Sweet home ordinance amending SHMC Chapter should be section 10.08.150, parking zones with expediency clause. Whereas SHMC 10.08.150 authorizes the city manager to establish and maintain parking zones on certain streets with marked spaces and time limitations for parking, and whereas activity within the downtown area and increased development throughout the city necessitate authorized parking zones in additional areas, now for it, therefore, the city of Sweet Home does ordain as follows. Section 1, SHMC Section 10.08.150, uh, subsection A, is amended to read A. The city manager is authorized to establish and maintain zones to be known as parking zones in the following streets. 1, Main Street. 2, Long Street. 3, 9th Avenue from Main Street to Nandina Street. 4, 10th Avenue from Long Street to Main Street. 5, 12th Avenue from Kalmaya Street to Nandina Street. 6, 13th Avenue from Kalmaya Street to Nandina Street. 7, 15th Avenue from Long Street to Nandina Street. 8, the north side of Kalmaya Street from its western terminus to 15th Avenue. 9, 43rd Avenue from Long Street to Airport Road. 10, Airport Road from 43rd Avenue to 49th Avenue. 11, 49th Avenue from Airport Road to Main Street. And 12, and from time to time hereafter as traffic conditions required in such other streets as are selected by resolution of the city for the location of such zones. Section 2, Expediency Clause, it is hereby adjudged and declared by the Sweet Home City Council that existing condi conditions are such that this ordinance is needed to be in effect at the time and date of its passage by the City Council and approval by the Mayor, and it is hereby declaring an emergency to promote the public health, safety, and welfare. Passed by the Council and approved by the Mayor this blank day of January 2023. Blank Mayor, attest City Manager, ex officio City Recorder. Thank you. Councilors, if you're interested in Moving it to second reading by title only. Please make a motion now. So moved. 
Second. Okay. Oh. Yeah. They, they voted unanimous on the first. Right. Okay. So uh, by title. We have a motion and a second. Yes. I think we need a roll call on that. Councilor Thorstead. Yes. Mayor Coleman. Yes. Councilor Mahler. Yes. Councilor Richards. Yep. Councilor Sanchez. Yes. Councilor Trask. Yes. Councilor Gorley. Yes. Ordinance bill number one for 2023, ordinance number blank, sweet home ordinance amending SHMC section 10.08.150 parking zones with expediency clause. Thank you. Now moving on to the vehicle camping ordinance. Thank you. Councilor. I'm sorry, Mayor, I'm sorry. We'll need a motion to move it to the third and final reading. Afterwards. Thank you. Um, I'll entertain a motion for the third and final reading on the 24th of this month. So moved. Second. And now we have a motion and a second, so we'll need a roll call on that as well. Councillor Mahler. Yes. Councillor Richards. Yes. Councillor Sanchez. Yes. Councillor Trask. Yes. Councillor Gorley. Yes. Councillor Thorstead. Yes. Mayor Coleman. Yes. Thank you for you guys' help with that. Can we move on now? Am I good? Okay. Okay. Um, vehicle camping ordinance. Um, no doubt many of you have noticed and we have continued to receive um, complaints and concern in comments from concerned citizens about this issue. Um, there has been a re recent influx of vehicle camping within the city. Um, currently, we do not have an ordinance that prohibits this. It's treated as uh, just like regular parking. Um, however, um, it does have effects on the neighborhoods around it and um, in the immediate area. Uh, the, when on public property and and within public rights of way, vehicle camping is permitted if it complies with parking regulations. Much like camping in public rights of way, vehicle camping has increased in recent years and the city is constrained by recent Ninth Circuit Court decisions, Martin, such as Martin v. Boise and Blake v. Gant, v. Grants Pass, that protect the right of homeless individuals to occupy public places. At the same time, vehicle camping inherently impacts public health and safety. The city cannot prohibit anyone from vehicle camping. However, it can pass time, place, and manner restrictions on the practice. Uh, staff proposed the attached ordinance, which restricts vehicle camping to the police department parking lot between the hours of 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. The ordinance also, um, I should amend, uh, is has a, a clause that allows the council by resolution to dictate other locations um, instead of the police department or in addition to the police department. Staff believe that this ordinance uh, complies with Ninth, the Ninth Circuit's rulings uh, while also addressing the valid safety concerns of sweet home residents. As this is an active problem affecting public health and safety, staff have included an expediency clause in the ordinance. And um, I believe uh, the rest is uh, as is written in the ordinance, but if you have any questions or concerns, I can take those now. Councilors, any questions or comments? Okay, I will entertain a motion. So moved as recommended. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Councilor Richards. Yes. Councilor Sanchez. Yes. Councilor Trask. Yes. Councilor Gorley. Yes. Councilor Thorstead. Yes. Mayor Coleman. Yes. Councilor Mahler. Yes. Okay, we have seven ayes and no nays. That means you can go ahead and read the ordinance for us. Ordinance bill number two for 2023, ordinance number blank, sweet home ordinance amending SHMC chapter 10.08, stopping standing and parking with expediency clause. Whereas motor vehicle camping or the use of a motor vehicle as a temporary place to live has real and detrimental effects on all areas of the city. And whereas recent court decisions protect the right of individuals to obtain shelter. And whereas as the public uh, health and safety effect Public health and safety effects of motor vehicle camping need to be addressed as soon as possible. An expediency clause has been included in this ordinance. Now, therefore, the city of Sweet Home does ordain as follows. Section one, SHMC section 10.08.035 is created to read as follows. 10.08.035 motor vehicle camping in public parking areas and within public rights of way. 
A, except as permitted in subsection B of this section, the use of a motor vehicle as a temporary place to live, also known as vehicle camping, is prohibited within the city of Sweet Home when the motor vehicle is parked within a publicly owned parking area or within any public right of way. B, motor vehicle camping is permitted at the Sweet Home Police Department parking lot. However, this location may be changed or other locations added as determined by city council resolution. Motor vehicle camping at approved locations is only permitted under the following conditions. One, motor vehicle camping may occur between the hours of 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. Two, the motor vehicle must be operational and capable of moving under its own power. Three, the motor vehicle must be parked entirely within a marked parking space. Four, recreational vehicles as defined in SHMC section 10.28.010 are not permitted. Five, any associated personal property must be stored within the vehicle. Section two, expediency clause. It is hereby adjudged and declared by the city of Sweet Home uh, by the Sweet Home City Council that existing conditions are such that this ordinance is needed to be in effect at the time and date of its passage by the City Council and approval by the Mayor, and it is hereby declaring an emergency to promote the public health, safety, and welfare. Passed by the Council and approved by the Mayor this blank day of January 2023. Blank Mayor, attest, blank City Manager, ex officio, City Recorder. Thank you. And Councillors, since we were unanimous at the last vote, um, I can entertain a motion to sec for a second reading by title only. I moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Julie, roll call, please. Councillor Sanchez? Yes. Councillor Trask? Yes. Councillor Gorley? Yes. Councillor Thorstad? Yes. Mayor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Mahler? Yes. Councillor Richards? Yes. Ordinance Bill number two for 2023, ordinance number blank, Sweet Home Ordinance amending SHMC Chapter 10.08, stopping standing and parking with expediency clause. Okay, I can entertain a motion to move to the third reading on the 24th of this month. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Julie, roll call, please. Councilor Trask? Yes. Councilor Gorley? Yes. Councilor Thorstead? Yes. Mayor Coleman? Yes. Councilor Mahler? Yes. Councilor Richards? Yep. Councilor Sanchez? Yes. Okay, we have seven ayes and no nays. It's moving forward to the third reading on the 24th. Um, now we move on to the next ordinance, RV Parking Ordinance Amendment. Okay. Um, in recent years, the city has experienced a sharp increase in the number of tra travel trailers and recreational vehicles parking within public rights of way. This has resulted in increased complaints, a rise in costs and use of staff time for trash cleanup and parking enforcement, as well as safety concerns. The city currently has no ordinance prohibiting the parking of travel trailers and recreational vehicles in available on-street parking spaces. They need only comply with parking rules which typically allow parking for up to two days without moving the vehicle. However, if the RV or trailer is moved a minor distance every two days, it can be parked in the right of way indefinitely. Recreational vehicles and travel trailers are designed for camping and recreating. Their use typically generates wastewater and garbage, much, much like a residential home. Typically, they are quite large and dangerously block drivers' line of sight. It is often hard for drivers to see children or even adults between parked passenger cars, and it is nearly impossible for drivers to see people behind RVs and travel trailers. Because they are so large, they typically occupy three or even four regular parking spaces, which severely restricts the supply of parking for passenger vehicles. Staff developed the proposed ordinance to respond to these issues. If passed, this ordinance would prohibit the parking of RVs and tra travel trailers in any public right of way with two exceptions. First, an adjacent property owner could park an, un an, an uninhabited RV for up to five days every month as long as it, as it is parked in front of their property. This allows a resident to pack, unpack, or other ways maintain their RV at their home. Second, RVs could park anywhere on Main Street or Long Street between Holly Road and 18th Avenue for up to two hours. This exception allows tourists traveling in RVs to patronize our local businesses. Um, so this is, this is a draft ordinance that we've prepared. We are uh, prepared to answer any questions you might have and make any changes that you might see as necessary. Any questions or comments from counselors? I'll entertain a motion. So moved as recommended. Second. I have a motion and a second. Julie, roll call, please. Councilor Gorley. Yes. Councilor Thorstead. Yes. Mayor Coleman. Yes. Councilor Mahler. Yes. Councilor Richards. Yep. Councilor Sanchez. Yes. Councilor Trask. Yes. We have seven ayes and no nays. I also want to throw in a thank you for Councillor um, Richards for taking photos for us today. They're all in front of us. Um, we can now move this, or we can now read this. Okay. 
Ordinance Bill Number Three for 2023, Ordinance Number Blank. Sweet Home Ordinance Amending SHMC Section 10.28.020, Limited Parking Permit Parking with, with Expediency Clause. Whereas parking of recreational vehicles, including travel trailers on public streets or alleys, typically requires two or three normal size parking spaces. And whereas parking of recreational vehicles, including travel trailers on public streets or alleys, dangerously impairs the view of drivers. And whereas the use of recreational vehicles, including travel trailers, typically generates trash, debris, and sewage. And whereas the above safety and health concerns need to be addressed as soon as possible, an expediency clause has been included in this ordinance. Now, therefore, the City of Sweet Home does ordain as follows. Section 1, SHMC Section 10.28.020, subsection A, is amended to include the following subsection. A, no person shall park or place or allow to be park or parked or placed any recreational vehicle on any public street or alley for any period of time except as follows. One, recreational vehicles may be parked for a period of up to two hours anywhere on Main Street or on Long Street between Holly Road and, and 18th Avenue so long as they comply with other city and state parking regulations. Two, an uninhabited recreational vehicle may be parked, stored, or left on a public street for up to five cumulative days in a 30-day period, but only if the vehicle is parked directly in front of the owner's property. Such vehicle must be parked in a manner not to interfere with emergency utility or and postal vehicles and must be parked in compliance with local and state law. Three, recreational vehicles owned by a public agency are exempt from this pro prohibition. Section two, the following subsections of SHMC section 10.28.020 limited parking permit parking shall be lettered in alphabetical order as follows. The current subsection A shall be lettered B, the current subsection B shall be lettered C and so forth so as to include all current subsections. Section three, expediency clause. It is hereby adjudged and declared by the Sweet Home City Council that existing conditions are such that this ordinance is needed to be in effect at the time and date of its passage by the City Council and approval by the mayor and is hereby declaring an emergency to promote the public health, safety, and welfare. Passed by the council and approved by the mayor this blank day of January, 2023. Blank mayor, attest, blank city manager, ex officio, city recorder. Councilors, since we were unanimous again, I will entertain a motion to have it read by the second re um, title only. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Councilor Trask. Uh, yes. Councilor Gorley. Yes. Councilor Thorsted. Yes. Mayor Coleman. Yes. Councilor Mahler. Yes. Councilor Richards. Yep. Councilor Sanchez. Yep. Ordinance Bill Number Three for 2023. Ordinance Number Blank. Sweet Home Ordinance Amending SHMC Section 10.28.020 Limited Parking Permit Parking with Expediency Clause. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to move this to the third reading on the 24th. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Councilor Gorley? Yes. Councilor Thurstead? Yes. Mayor Coleman? Yes. Councilor Mahler? Yes. Councilor Richards? Yes. Councilor Sanchez? Yes. Councilor Trask? Yes. Okay, we have seven ayes and no nays to move it to the third reading on the 24th. We have no third reading of ordinance bills today. Um, moving on to reports of committee. Um, I would like to say that uh, before we hear reports currently that if anybody would like to tell me which committees they'd be interested in sitting on uh, in this next season, please let me know. You can either email me, text me, or uh, speak to me after a council meeting tonight. But if anybody has any reports right now, I'd love to hear them. I was made aware of a video today that has to do with our committee. Um, the community health committee, and so our city manager has prepared it to share it. All right, thank you. And we did get confirmation that this can be shared publicly, but just still be where it's a little bit of a draft as well. And while we're getting it ready, we want to give special thanks to the school district, particularly. Ramil Malabaga. Ramil? Ramil? Malabaga. Malabaga. Um, <laughs> and also for Adam, who also prepares for the footage as well, as well as all of the students and everybody else who's involved. You'll get to see the community members as well. So thanks to everybody who's been involved in this. I know that um, we'll probably want to do something in the future to recognize the individuals who are involved in this. But this was just too wonderful to 
postponed given how close we are to opening the facility and um, the energy the students bring to the project. And I'll also be giving an update as part of the city manager's report on kind of where we are with this as well, as well as some of the next steps and some of the steps on initiatives as well.
I don't think you can't watch that without getting a smile on your face for all the youth um, participating in that. I think that's wonderful. I agree with Councilor Moore with the recognitions. Yes. Students and teachers. Yes, I think we need to get them in here to recognize them. Madam Mayor, I, I, I would like to see at least the the, the uh, teacher of the uh, wood shop if we give him something special because he railroaded this whole thing the whole time. That's the wrong word, by the way. But he just he just he just did a good job and got the kids on board. And it, it was a big deal. We could have never gotten this done if had this hadn't that system that he got to go on. And it's uh, it's pretty good. And I, I think we should give him some sort of kudos for that. And the kids too. I think that's a wonderful idea. I know that FAC is planning on doing a grand opening and a thank you, but I think for the city to actually do one as well, I think would be fantastic. So we'll work on getting that on the agenda. I would also like to acknowledge when the mayor gave the community health committee this assignment, it was Dr. Hort and subcommittee that made this a possibility and took it to the school to the students and then rallied everybody from their support. So he, kudos to him for all the hours and work that he has put into this. Any other reports from committees? Moving on reports of city officials. I'm I have. Um, some things I would just like to share a little bit. Um, as the mayor, I've thought about whether I would become the mayor. And um, something I would just like to say is uh, I would like to be sure to hear from every city councilor. Um, that's why I quoted the rule to Councilor Trask, who so graciously just um, followed along with that, because I think that's important that each councilor is able to express their voice. Everyone here has been elected by a different group of people. Um, some overlap, but you represent those people here. You are their voice here. And so um, I, I hope that you can speak up and share um, what you, you think your constituent base would want us to hear. Um, but it is humbling to be the first woman um, mayor since 1983. Uh, I think the last one was Ruth Ganta. Did I say her name correctly? Those have been, yeah. In 1983, she was um, sworn in as mayor, and so I'm just honored to be the next one. Um, I also would like to say that I am a big proponent of honoring every person, and uh, I will shut down any attempt to shame or dishonor anybody in these proceedings. We've had some tough times in the past, and we've had to do. We've had a lot of tensions. I think a lot of the tensions have to do with just emotions being raw from a lot of stuff that's happened, COVID, wildfires, but also transitions. So I'd like us to just move forward. Let's all agree to leave the past in the past. And um, as we begin this new year, let us just choose to move forward uh, with our different worldviews and perspectives that we all have come around this table and share all of our varied beliefs and ideas so that we can come to some solid solutions for Sweet Home and um, the betterment of our community and our hometown. So um, like I said before, please feel free to reach out to me with committees you'd be interested in being on. I may not be able to put everybody on the committee they would like, but I will do my best to um, consider all of your choices. Okay, moving on to city manager's report. All right, thank you. So first off, I just want to start with saying congratulations to all of our um, council members, it, both those that were just elected as well as all of those that are on here. I don't think it's always recognized the sacrifices that our council members make in order to be here and with fairly little return. I mean, there's almost no monetary return and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time and it's also having to put yourself out there in front of the community and it's a big sacrifice. It's also a really wonderful privilege to get to help shape the community, but I just want to say thank you to all of you and um, it was quite a historic moment tonight too, I think, in having um, I want to say congratulations to all of our nominees and as it was mentioned, we had two women nominated for mayor, um, including a woman of color and I'm the first, I think, permanent city manager that's a woman as well. So this was kind of a historic moment for Sweet Home. But I want to thank all of you 
fact that you all keep coming back and um, campaigning and getting elected and being a part of this, I mean, that's a huge deal. And I don't think the community always understands exactly how much of a challenge this is. So just a huge thank you to all of you and a huge congratulations. And um, so happy that this is the council that we have moving forward. All right, so I have a couple updates that I want to talk about. First, I want to talk about um, FAC. So they have been working hard on trying to move forward. They, I don't think they would be even close to as far as they are if it wasn't for the help of our community. We had quite a few community members out there. And um, as Councillor Gorley mentioned too, um, Dr. Horton, I have seen out there almost every day. I also want to thank Councillor Sanchez, who I has also been trying to push this along as well as being in the community. I want to thank um, Chief Ogden and Director Springman as well for pushing some of these pieces together. So as well as um, Director Larson. It was, I was going to be Director Blair for a second, so please excuse me on that. So it's all been a big effort. They're not quite there, but we do expect them to open this week. So we're hoping for Thursday right now, and that's we were hoping for tomorrow, but Thursday is looking quite possible. Um, and it's not open yet, but once it is, we're hoping to start taking back the rest of the community. So you all see a, an additional initiative that we've been putting out to the memo to our police chief, and we have support there as well, where we are going to be moving those that are just in the overflow of not able to get into the FAC because there aren't enough beds, but when we'll see exactly how many people there are there who will be moved to the police station parking lot. There's a back area that we've already prepared. Um, we have some gravel down there. There's going to be another dumpster and a porta potty going there for now. Again, this is just for overflow. The idea is that FAC is going to be providing the beds and provided that there are enough beds, we shouldn't see any tents over in that area. If there aren't beds left in the FAC, then this would be an area for them to be there, hopefully in the short term, while FAC prepares additional huts. So that's something that we have been working on. Um, another piece that I want to bring up is it's been mentioned a bit that sometimes people see somebody sleeping in a doorway or something along those lines. We only have control over public property. If there is private property, we can assist if the property owner reaches out and requests our assistance. So we also want to ask that if there's anybody out in the community who does see this to report to the police department. And at that point, the police department can assist and has been doing a great job in doing so when we've had property owners reaching out. Um, that brings us to some other things. And again, I want to thank our police departments. You've had a very challenging past few weeks, and actually even longer than that. We have seen an uptick in crime in certain areas, particularly in our downtown and in some houses. I know that um, the police department has increased their watch and can increase their patrols. We also want to call on the community on um, those who would be interested in increasing and bringing back neighborhood watch. And we're going to have more information on that coming out on what we can and cannot do. And we are going to try to support that as best we can. And Chief Bogdan um, and Officer Sean Morgan? CSO, CSO, CSO Officer. OK, Sean Morgan is also going to be providing some additional information on that. We also have had daily um, conversations about ways that we can improve the safety of our community. So we're going to be coming back with some additional ideas. We're talking about things like lighting and possibly some additional security cameras. Um, we also may be asking you, and we have our supplemental budget that's going to be coming up, to add another officer. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that as well. Um, we 
as part of our agreement with FAC, we are going to be providing security services and we're going through the process of evaluating that right now. It's possible that we might be able to have some of the security services also looking at rounds in other places. So these are all things that we'll be continuing to bring back, but please know that as staff we have been discussing at great lengths potential options to do. This is something though that we cannot do alone. And so we do want to ask citizens to also step forward as they can to try to do neighborhood watch, to involve in other communities, and to bring forward your ideas. So, all right, so moving on, there's another thing that we'd also like to ask for community involvement in. The Army Corps of Engineers is going to have a meeting regarding um, public input having to do with lowering green peter and potentially foster down that is going to be tomorrow night at 6 p.m at the jim rex community center i will be there and we will be preparing some comments in order to try to talk about the potential impact that, that would have on this area we own because that is something that could be very very challenging for our community if anybody else would like to attend it is open to the public and you all are invited if um you are unable to attend this public input process is going to be ongoing for the next, I think, I think they have another 60 days or so of this. And they, they can be reached by email at um, willamet.eis at um, usace.army.mil or in writing to the Army Corps of Engineers address. We'll be putting this out as well so that people can have access to it. Okay, moving on to some kind of more fun things as well. Um, the dog park at Northside Park is now open. We're going to have a grand opening for Arbor Day, but it is fully operational if anyone wants to bring their dogs. And um, so far, we've seen a lot of great community use already. Every time I've gone out there, I've seen some families and dogs out there and so forth. Um, there is still space for kids to run around and there's still the playground and there'll be some additional pieces coming. We'll have a big grand opening, um, like I said, on Arbor Day. But one of the cool things is by opening this dog park, we now met another criteria. So Sweet Home is now a certified pet friendly city. So um, we just got that last Friday and So coming up next council meeting, you're going to get to see the supplemental budgets. That is um, most of the draft is complete and Matt and I are kind of meeting with different departments and we're going to be finalizing that to come forth on the 24th. And we have some good news. It's actually looking a lot more positive than we have been concerned about. And um, we have a new fund structure, which I think is going to make it easier to understand for the general public and it's very transparent so hopefully everyone will like this and so we'll be talking about that next time around you also are going to see an update from all of the staff members um, on the 24th about sort of what they've gone through in the past year and some of the big wins and goals for the next little while so that's all for me thank you all very much I would encourage fellow counselors to be at the meeting tomorrow night if you're able to. Um, department directors reports. Any director that would like to share their report? They're all in there. Okay. Uh, how about the finance director? You want to go over your report? You have something to show us. We're, we're excited about that. Yeah, um, there's obviously uh, it's probably like seven or eight pages, but the amount of time and effort and work over the last several months, uh, not only by myself, but by all your staff members. And I do want to give a big shout out to Cindy in the finance department who has taken a, a, a huge step in um, assisting the city of Sweet Home get through all of this. So um, a big thank you to Cindy is, is well worth the effort if you have an opportunity to say so. Um, so you have a report in front of you that is uh, looking back at the last two years of the actuals and then um, what is what I refer to as the unaudited results for 21-22. Um, if you're unfamiliar, the 
Uh, audit for the fiscal year 22 is just getting started. Uh, in a perfect world, it is done by the end of the calendar year. Um, but that obviously with everything we have going on has been kind of pushed off as we finish things up for that 22 year. So we are currently getting all the audited files ready for the auditors to review. Um, I am anticipating that the audit will be done sometime between March and April. Um, and the state of Oregon and the revenue department is aware of this. We filed in an official extension just to let them know that, hey, we know we're late. Um, give us some grace, uh, just like they did last year. So I haven't heard uh, anything bad back or that anything's been denied or anything. So we're continuing to move forward and the auditors are aware of that. Um, as Kelsey mentioned, we'll bring you next time a new city budget and myself and Kelsey and probably some of the department managers will pitch in on um, letting you know what's going on. Overall, everything in the funds are actually fairly healthy and a lot healthier than what we originally anticipated. So it is very good news for the city of Sweet Home and we're looking forward to moving forward in uh, a positive light for the future. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Any council business for the good of the order? Nope. Okay, I'll close this meeting at 748.